In this video, I'm going to talk about why you'd even want to use Enforcer in the first place, a justification of why this really even exists. So, in my experience, I've used um, Spring Security ACL, and that kind of, some of its limitations drove me to want something better, which is why I came up with uh, Enforcer. And I'm going to go through some of, you know, my arguments of, you know, why I think, th you know, it could have been done better and what, you know, how Enforcer actually uh, does that. I'll also go through a, a few other, you know, various options that I saw at the time and I see now and, you know, why I didn't use them and thought that, you know, Enforcer would be a better solution. So first thing right off is Spring Security ACL uses uh, EL, uh, Spring EL in its annotations. And until most recently, there was no compiler help, no syntax highlighting, um, you know, and it's just, it was a, it's a very constricted, you know, Spring-based language. Um, more recent versions of IntelliJ have included supposedly uh, some syntax highlighting, but I'm, willing to bet that if you actually extend, you know, EL, it may or may not actually, you know, uh, pick up, you know, highlighting of, you know, what you extended. And I'm not sure how well it deals with, uh, you know, things like uh, parameters and stuff like that, where, you know, with Springs, with uh, my Enforcer plugin, it's just a closure and it can, you know, access any of the parameters. It's just code. So, you know, the uh, IDE just kind of treats it as code. Um, so it's it's a lot easier to, you know, to read and manipulate and actually debug. Um, another thing that I really didn't like about Spring Security ACL is it used a fake bit mask. So it, it used uh it wasn't like a a bit mask where like you know you could flip the one ones and zeros and make it whatever the permissions it's like every permission had its own uh number value which was you know the bits flipped and this you know like while it's it's efficient like you know in terms of like, you know, if you had a bit mask would be efficient if you were using something like a file system. But when you're storing these in a database, it makes them very hard to read and hard, even harder to query and, you know, parse out. Plus, you know, I, I make the, the the argument, we're not in the 80s anymore. We can we can store a string and query it. You know, disk is relatively cheap. Um, another thing is the spring security. It's... Uh, especially the plugin, its default uh, persistence is very normalized. And this is, you know, in, in general, within databases, this is good for, you know, reducing redundancy and stuff like that, but it's kind of bad for performance. And, uh, you know, you have to do a lot of joins, so, you know, in order to actually figure out what permissions uh, someone had, on an object using this in the bit mass uh, would be like about a page long of a query uh, that you know we had this like you know stored in the wiki at, at one particular company I worked at just to figure out what permissions someone had on an object whereas with the way I set it up in uh, Enforcer it's very much uh, denormalized so that there's pretty much just one entry for the permission per user so you know the query becomes very simple it's you know it's pretty much like uh, you know one liner or so so um, the other thing is that I that I found is uh, updating the permissions in Spring Security, at least in older versions, I don't know if this has been fixed by now, uh, if you're doing like bulk updates can be really slow because of how it was doing indexing and basically with its cache, you know, every time that uh, you would like say if you wanted to like delete every all the permissions and add new, a new set, it would be really slow. So I had to, when I was doing this, I had to hack it so that I actually cleared 
the plugin's internal cache, which was kind of hard to get at at the time. Uh, another really big drawback that I see with uh, Spring Security ACL and pretty much most of the other uh, permission services is they use uh, Spring Proxies, which uh, if you're calling from within the same class, the annotation, the anno or the class that the annotation is on, or the not the class, the method that the annotation is on, that uh, check will actually never get run. You have to actually call from outside whatever that class is inside to that class to get it to be run. So if you're in the class and you want to call it and have the uh, security, you have to actually you know get the spring context and call outside back in. And this can lead to you know some false negatives and a false sense of security in my mind because you know I've I've seen this and I've I've lived it and it's like you know my first iteration if I hadn't tested you know the false negatives it's like wow I would have had like a bunch of security holes in my code so I see that as a major uh, problem with you know these types of uh, oh uh, permission systems. Now, it, it's kind of what you have within, uh, you know, because of the way Java works, you know, you you, you have to have like an annotation processor, um, and that's how Spring proxies work. But within, you know, Groovy, we have AST transforms, and that's the way Enforcer works. So basically, when you use that annotation, that code gets injected at compile time and is run every time you call that method. So, you know, in my mind, it's a little bit more secure. Um, another thing, and I've, I've kind of already uh, mentioned this, is uh, the uh, permissions uh, in Spring Security ACL. Since there's no hierarchy that I could find, like I, I actually look, went back and looked for this. Uh, in one instance, I you know, previous employer, uh, at one point, I think we had about a thousand containers and we had like over 400,000 uh, permission entries and I introduced something similar to this plugin and it went down to 20,000 permission entries which is huge you know in terms of maintenance and you know readability and things like that so uh, extending uh, Spring Security ACL uh, for me is not straightforward uh, I I tried to to do this at several uh, several times and and failed because you know it was, like I said with the uh, the way you know the compiler doesn't really help you you have to basically kind of you know do your coding and hope it works and I just found that uh, you know I I tried to add things and override things but it's like nothing seemed to actually work when I tried to override things and I'm I know there's ways to do it but because of how hard it was, I, I don't think it's really worth, you know, going to that level. Um, another thing is it's somewhat hard to test the annotations. Now, uh, Enforcer, uh, the way I have it set up is in tests, uh, the annotation is turned off by default. But if you want, you can turn it on and actually test what those annotations are doing. Um, so you have the freedom to actually test them, and my uh, unit tests actually—that's what they actually do. So you know you have examples um, in the default unit tests that I uh, install when you install the plugin. Now uh, there are a few other uh, frameworks that I, I looked at um, briefly. Uh, Shiro, which I, I ha you know—I'll be honest—I have not spent enough time to understand this. Uh, but I, I see that as part of the problem was because when I started looking at this, it's like, I don't get it. Uh, it, it, it the way it's set up didn't really make sense to me, uh, you know, how this would be work as a permission framework. I, I know you can use it as a permission framework, but it didn't make sense to me. Um, the other thing is, it while the uh, plugin didn't have annotations, the library itself does. But I suspect they have the same issues that Spring proxies have because they're not AST transformations. Uh, another one that I've I've seen, um, and I haven't touched this at all, 
but I, I heard about it and I kind of just looked at it briefly was Drolls and um, from I haven't heard good things about this uh, and basically from what I've seen more recently is none of the plugins that are you know use this are actually uh, actively maintained um, Another thing that I saw uh, before I made this was G contracts, and G contracts looked very promising. Unfortunately, it's not meant to be worth work with Grails. It just, you know, it's it was. The, I know they have some fundamental issues with wh how this works, but they have a lot of the, you know, similar annotations to what I have. Uh, but it doesn't quite work with Grails, and there's a, a wiki based on that. So those are the reasons why you know I think you know uh, the Enforcer is you know a worthwhile plugin, and why it, you know I think it's you know it's better, it's easier to maintain, it's flexible, and it just saves a lot of time and is like it's it's essentially makes a groovy DSL for enforcing. Uh, business rules and permissions. So I'll see you in the next video.